we take the hunt off-road. Here's a look at the new Jurassic World Dino Rivals Off-Road Tracker ATV. You can track and catch with the Off-Road Tracker ATV. Comes included with the Owen figure along with the Dracker racks. What do you think? Get some measurements going? I agree. Let's get some measurements for how big these figures stand. So taking the Ultra Measuretron 5000, putting it very top, very, very top of Owen. There we go. Stop it right there. The figure stands at a very small, very tiny four point, well, four inches in height. Centimeter wise, that works out to be 10.2 uh, centimeters tall for little tiny Owen. We're gonna go ahead and take the measurements for the Dracorax and we're gonna do it right to the very top of the head. The figure actually, if you look at it here, from the very top to its spike, the Dracorax stands at 3.9 inches in height. So really about the same as Owen. Switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at the dinosaur being about 10 centimeters high, 9.9 .9 centimeters exactly. To come included with the set, you get yourself a Dino Rivals Jurassic World card, which we flip it around, has the Dracorex featured on the front, along with its stats, which I guess would be strength, speed, intelligence, and ferocity. Uh, four, six, two, and three, respectively. Uh, a nice little image there of the Dracorex. I have to admit, though, I'm not too keen on the fact, you probably can see it right there, there's a big strip of tape right there that uh, they have taped to put this onto the card, that little clamshell case inside the packaging. I don't know why they ha would have to have used tape because unfortunately I just ended up cutting the sides. If I had ripped it across, it literally would have ripped the card if I had just peeled it across. So I like the card, not so happy for the fact that it's got a big piece of tape. There must've been some easier way that they could have put that inside the packaging. We will put that to the side. Uh, let's have a look at Owen first and foremost and again a big uh, thank you for anyone who has watched unboxing videos on this channel Thank you by the way for that But thank you to viewer Bill who took the time and picked these ones up for me he sent me a whole slew of the new uh, Jurassic World figures So we're going to do our best to try to have a look at them on this channel uh, First things first again, we're having a look at Owen not really much to be said for Owen. I mean, we've gotten this guy before multiple times actually in fact Coloring wise, I think this is the same one that came included with Velociraptor Blue. Uh, the head sculpt for what it is, I suppose, is passable. It never does look as good as it does on the back of the packaging. The back of the packaging does look like uh, Chris Pratt. Here, it just kind of, well, it doesn't really look necessarily like him. It kind of looks, kind of looks a little bit like Owen Wilson. Speaking of another Owen, but he's wearing a, a blue moderately longed uh, length sleeve shirt probably a rolled up sleeve blue shirt blue pair of jeans belt and he's got some boots there here's the back of the figure he's got a big noticeable hole in the back what's going on with the back of the hole well there also includes a little knife comes with a little tab point it just fits into the hole like that and he's got a knife that he can use i mean when you do display him say for example if you want to put the knife into his hand he sort of is also holding the knife uh, inside the sheath. So, I mean, it's not really as if he's actually wielding a retracted knife. Instead, it's always going to be inside of that. But in the meantime, we just pe peg that to the back there. Articulation on Owen, uh, it's pretty good for its size. The head rotates all the way around. It actually sits on a ball joint, so it hinges up and down and slightly left and right as well. The arms hinge out. You can also rotate them all the way around like that. You can bend at the elbow. You can rotate the forearm. You can rotate the waist. Sometimes, though, when you are rotating the waist, just be careful that this isn't sticking up. Because if you clip it, bing, it's going to go across the room and your little kitty cat or someone else is going to grab that. In fact, I actually just dropped it. Uh, the legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out. Bend at the knee, rotate the lower leg, and uh, no articulation in the feet. So there is Owen. Not a bad figure. Good if you didn't already pick up an Owen, but, I mean, if you're... You know, if you are religiously picking up all the Jurassic World pieces, you probably have, oh, I don't know, four, five, maybe 17 Owens kicking around. 
Moving on to the dinosaur in question here. Here is the Dracorax. I think it's, that's how you correctly pronounce the Dracorax. Um, it does have some neat posability to it. I like the fact that it does have the adjustable neck that goes up and down. It does feel like I, I want to feel as if it can go further back, but that's as far down as it actually goes. And it has an abrupt stopping point right there. It's actually this little sculpted piece of its spine that hinders the, the neck from moving any bit further up from that. It's a nicely colored dinosaur, all things considered. It's almost like a very frosted purple. I know it kind of looks like it's blue in camera, but closer inspection, it actually looks like a really, 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 really light gray or light beige uh, with a slight purple tint to it. I like also that they've flicked a few little speckles there of a darker kind of purpley color in there as well. And then as for the main printing of the dinosaur, it's almost like a gray, a very dark, dark, uh, almost like charcoal gray uh, up at the top there. I like that it does transition and uh, as you can see, it looks like it's been rather airbrushed instead of just painted. That's the only way that you could have gotten a slight variation in which it goes from that lighter purple to the immediately dark, dark gray, almost borderline black that's on the top there. This one's got a neat design to it. It's got a lot of spikes protruding out from its head. A very small looking uh, set of eyes, peepers there on both sides, done in yellow. Kind of looks like he's got a smile or it has a smile. Could be likely, likely a she. I don't know if this part is supposed to be painted, but it does kind of look like it's supposed to be smiling. And that kind of brings a smile to my face when I see that, if only that was actually painted in. I don't think that is actually supposed to be an open mouth, but it, gosh darn it, it does look like an open smiling mouth. That is like the happiest dinosaur I have ever seen. It's got little tiny small arms, small legs, and uh, the tail, the tail does rotate. Okay, so we'll just kind of look through the posability on it. And by the way, there is the dinosaur fact QR code. We're gonna go ahead and scan that. Don't worry, we'll, we won't forget about that. And then, of course, to know that it is legit, there's the Jurassic World logo there on, on the underside. So let's look at the, the articulation here for one Dracorax. The head rotates all the way around. Uh, it hinges up and down. And I also, again, love the fact that the neck moves up and down as well. The arms rotate back and forth. The legs, a little bit more limited, I have, to, I have to admit, but the legs do move forward and back, and uh, you can rotate the tail. So all around, nice looking dinosaur. Um, they don't always have to be big, you know, and that's the beauty of these Jurassic World pieces is that you can get really, really big dinosaurs, really, really small dinosaurs, and then moderately sized dinosaurs in the middle of all that. So there's the Dracorax. There is an Owen that we've already gotten before. We'll move these out of the way and we will have a look now at the off-road tracker ATV. Kind of from the front, it looks like an insect, being that it's got these little pincers on the front. The idea is that you open these up and then there's a little activation button in the front. When you press that, it closes. Ow, ow, ow. Not hard, mind you, but it does close with a snap shut. The idea is, while you are driving this around in theory, I don't know whereabouts you would be able to grab the dinosaur. It's not, I guess, as if you would be able to grab it from its side, but let's say it drove up to the dinosaur. It would close shut. Now, see, here's one big problem with the, the toy is that it doesn't close. I guess it would close around the neck. That seems like that would be awfully harsh if you're just tracking the dinosaur. But if you put it around its neck, it holds it a little bit better. If you put it around like its waist, for example, not nearly enough of it can actually grab around the dinosaur, which there, there's a certain irony to the fact that you really can't capture the dinosaur other than if you wanted to grab it by the neck. And I don't think the dinosaur is going to enjoy that very much at all. Or I guess one other thing too, if you bring these out, you could catch it around the leg, which is a little bit more humane. It doesn't completely hold the dinosaur, mind you. But I guess there's a couple of different options available. Speaking of options available, we'll bring the legs out so it stands properly. See all these little holes? It almost looks like it has all these bullet holes in the back there. Well, actually those serve a purpose. 
included with the ATV, you get all these little packs. And all the packs have the same universal plug. You're supposed to be able to fit these any which way that you want. So if you want to have it at the top, you can have it in the front, two spots in the front. This area here, unfortunately, gets a little too close for comfort, and it doesn't quite fit this way. Um, doesn't quite fit this way either, and doesn't quite fit this way either. So really, there's only for the larger packs, only four places where you could, in theory, plug those into place. When you do also plug them into place, you have to put a lot of pressure into them. They, as you can see right there, they also seem to develop a little bit of a stress mark. You're just going to push, push it right in, and there's one of them. You can take the other one, and I like to have these symmetrical, so I'm going to put it on the other side as well. I want to make sure I have these facing the right way. I mean, you, again, you can really put these anywhere, but there are limitations. You can't put them anywhere you want, but... And then you have this little smaller pack, which I almost felt like as if I was going to be dropping. This one does fit a little bit easier. I mean, it, you could put them here, 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 or here. Say if I want to put this one right here, this one will fit much easier inside. Or to make sure that you can actually get Owen's legs around there, the seat that is. I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to tab this right here. That way there's enough clearance. Owen can sit himself very comfortably in place and then he can drive around the ATV. Now, it does feel light. It doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of plastic happening here. You can see that it's got some much, very much hollow areas to it. The undercarriage is very, very hollow. Um, one big problem that I have with it is it, it's very loose here. Now, obviously, for this to be an all-terrain off-road tracker, the idea is it can be able to move over objects. Over top of a boulder, no problem whatsoever. Need to get over a log, it can pretty much do that as well. Unfortunately, the trade-off for something that has as much off-road capabilities as it does, it does translate to what is a very loose feeling. It wants to, in, unfortunately, end up, as a result of it, feel a little cheap. Like, it feels like a really cheap toy. It feels like you would get this, say, at a dollar store. And I think a lot of the problem, the, the weight of it certainly doesn't help much. But I think the big problem, too, is that you've got these wheels that just sit really, really loose. In fact, actually, the wheels spin only because there's nothing there's nothing limiting or nothing stopping them from spinning. If they were actually sitting inside of a proper groove, these wheels on their own don't spin, like they don't spin on the bars, the bars right here, unless you really turn them. The only reason why they're able to spin that they are is because they're sitting so loosely inside the suspension system of the all-terrain vehicle. It's again a trade-off. It makes sense. I'm not certainly dismissing for the fact that from this, it does make sense that the vehicle would be designed this way. Um, it, you know, being able to get around things, certainly it does look cool, but when you pick it up, it feels floppy and loose, which is unfortunately just, again, a trade-off to it. You can take Owen, just bend his knees, bend his knees, bring his arms forward, and plank, plant him down right there, and you can just twist his hands around until he gets around the handlebar area. And that fits on one side, and it fits on the other side. And he does sit actually rather comfortably inside the ATV vehicle. And like I said, it does look good. It, pra it does a practical thing of what it's supposed to do. Like I said, it does be, it would allow you to get around terrain and stuff like that. But uh, physically, it just feels, like I said, it just feels a little on the loose side. Uh, as it goes for smaller terrain vehicles, smaller vehicles, if you already have your existing collection of, say, three and three quarter inch, about four inch tall Jurassic World figures, this is kind of a nice accompanying set, being that you get yourself a moderately sized dinosaur. And of course, then you get an Owen you may already have. And then you also get yourself a pretty cool ATV vehicle. A little on the loose side. But I can certainly understand why it has to be loose. It just still feels pretty loose in hand. Now, I obviously didn't forget. We're going to go ahead and find out some more stats about the Dracorax. So here's the dinosaur of the week. This is the Pteranodon. We might as well see it while we're at it. And there's the Pteranodon. 
Well, we get some stats about it, even though this isn't what I was originally going to plan on doing. The Pteranodon has her long beak is devoid of teeth. I had no idea. But what we are here, obviously what we're here to do is we're going to go back to our collection of dinosaurs. Now I'm going to go into scan, which is the bottom tab right there. I'm going to take my dinosaur, line it up. There it is right there. It's going to scan it off. And we're going to unlock ourselves the Dracorax. And there it is right there. Sort of the same coloring as what we have with the actual dinosaur. Here it looks a little bit more blue than the physical dinosaur at hand. But again, a nice little representation of the Dracorax. Again, I wish you could do something with these. Pet them. Agitate them. Maybe throw food at them. I don't know. But what we are going to do, though, is we are going to check its stats. I just went back and missed it. And we are going to go inside and find out a little bit more about the Dracorax. So we're going to click the top one. Her neck has strong muscles to support the weight of her skull. Down below, she is a herbivore, so it utilizes a bipedal locomotion. And lastly, and certainly not least, paleontologists estimate her top speed is about 25 miles per hour, which is pretty fast, actually. Again, a big thank you to viewer Bill for taking the time and sending me the off-road tracker ATV. Despite my slight negative points about the vehicle, only really for the fact that it does feel a little on the cheap side, I get the fact that for this being an all-terrain vehicle, it does definitely live up to that, and you can get it around some fun little obstacles if you were playing with this outside. The grabbing claw on the front I don't think works as well as they had hoped. Grabbing it really only around the leg and the neck of the dinosaur, which you could imagine that grabbing it around its neck, the dinosaur isn't going to like that very much at all. It's a nice colored vehicle and certainly supports not just the Owen that comes included with, but any of your other three and three quarter inch Jurassic World figures as well. Good news though is if you guys are interested in picking up the off-road tracker ATV, you should be able now to find it at your local retail stores. Even though this Canadian still can't find a lot of these new dinosaur toys uh, hitting the store shelves, usually I'm relegated to the older stuff. I guess that store, or most of the stores that I'm checking out, like Walmarts and what have you, are looking to get rid of the stuff that they already have before they can bring out the new Dino Rivals toy line. So I just have to keep waiting it out, hopefully seeing eventually we'll start getting more and more of that stuff flooding the shelves, and as soon as they do, expect some more reviews to come onto this channel. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, and certainly if you guys want to go back and have a look at my reviews of some of the previous Jurassic World toys, there's a playlist on this channel. I've done a fair bit, actually, of covering off on some of the older Jurassic World toy line, which sounds funny even just to say the older toy line, because the Dino Rivals has only come out like a few months after the end of the Jurassic World toy line. But needless to say, if you guys, like I said, want to go back and have a look at some of my previous videos, there's a playlist there for you. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button that's just located below this video. And certainly stay tuned because more videos and more video reviews will be coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.